find what takes their breath away, and that's their passion. That's their Everest. And then they have to follow it. To be able to follow it, you have to believe it 100% in your mind, heart, and your whole soul, and everything is achievable, and nothing is impossible. مرحبا قبل ما ابلش هي اول مره برجع على الكويت من 1990 this is the first time i come back and the minute i came um, down the plane and came out of the airport i had all these flashbacks uh, with the place i was born and um, the first flashback is the schools i studied and then Gergian, uh, Ramadan, and then uh, the most one that is stuck in my mind is in 1982 in Spain, um, uh, World Cup, uh, Kuwait was playing, it was 25th of June uh, 1982, I was 12 years old, uh, Ahmed Tarabulsi passed the ball to Al Ambari, Al Ambari to Fatih Kamil, Fatih Kamil to Blushi, to Faisal, to Jasim Al Dakhil, and Faisal Al Dakhil put the goal. Uh, and I saw my dad; the tears it was in his eyes, and this is something I will always remember. And it made me feel a sense of pride to belong to a, a country like Kuwait. Um, now I go back a little bit with my story, my family um, have to leave Palestine in 1948 to a refugee camp in Jordan and then we move in 1970 to Kuwait where I was born. Uh, when I was 18 I had to leave Kuwait to go back to Jordan. Uh, the war happened and then I finished high school. Um, I always appreciate the greatest uh, education that uh, Kuwait has given me. Uh, now, I couldn't go to university. I had to help my dad. We were 10 children, so I started working as a waiter in uh, different restaurants in Jordan. Uh, and then my dream was to go to England uh, to continue my education and help my family. Uh, by chance, I meet the Jordanian ambassador uh, brother in London and he said that his brother is looking for somebody to work in his house to clean and make coffee. 1992 I moved to London to work for the Jordanian ambassador. I worked for one year and then I didn't learn anything. I wanted to learn some English so I could go to university. I left the embassy and I started working at a restaurant. I had no English so I had to work in the kitchen. Worked for five years washing dishes until I learned how to cook. <clears throat> I saved some money. My strategy was 50% to go to my family. 25% I saved, 25% I will uh, for my living. Uh, after uh, six years, I saved enough money to go up to Scotland to join Queen Margaret University and I studied international hospitality and tourist management because my dream is to become a general manager to a five-star hotel. I studied, uh, and then in the second year, I joined the Sheraton. And by 2004, I became the director of food and beverage manager for Back Lane in London. And then I was moved to Scotland to become the assistant general manager. So I have one year, two years to become the general manager, and I achieved my dream to travel the world. But all this uh, uh, stop with the dream I have. I wake up in the middle of the night in 2004. I was totally sweating. I saw myself in the top of the world, praying for peace. Uh, I wake up, I Google the highest point in the world. I have no idea ever is the highest point in the world. I never climbed the mountain, I never slept in a sleeping bag. The only form of exercise was to go clubbing every weekend and dance my head off. Uh, so, um, I knew that Everest is not easy. I knew you need the sponsorship. 
Uh, I told all my friends this. They thought I was in drugs. I told them I'm not. And um, I thought I'll come to Jordan to try to get some sponsor. Nobody took me serious. Everyone thought I was mental. And I thought, OK, the best way is to get to the top guy in the country, which is King Abdullah. I go to his website, try to get all the information I want. I contact the Sunday Time, which is a newspaper that he read. I found out from his website. The Sunday Time chief editor used to come at Park Lane with his, uh, uh, some of his uh, people he used to interview. He, I told him about my dream, and he offered to write an article. He wrote an article, Climbing for Peace. Uh, three weeks later, I have a phone call from the Royal Palace in Jordan to say that they want to see me. So I went back to uh, Jordan. I saw the king advisors, and this uh, they decided to help me. So in 2004, for the first time in April 2004, I go to the mountain, never slept in a sleeping bag. It's very cold. I hated it. I went to Nepal to do Merabik. I didn't make it up. In May 2004, I went to Tibet to climb. I didn't make it up. And then the deal was with the Real Palace. If I go in June 2004 and climb the highest point in North America, they will take me seriously. And I went there in June. I, I've reached the top of Denali, and everything changed. They start taking me seriously. First time, I found out about something called the Seven Summit, which is the highest point in each of the seven continents. So I started, rather than praying for peace and take the Jordanian flag up to Everest, I'm going to do it to the Seven Summit. I started in Kilimanjaro, then I went to uh, South America to do Aconcagua, and then to Antarctica to do Vincent Massive straight to Europe to do Elbrus, and then to Australia to do Cartins Permits. And then, uh, of course, Everest was the highest. 2005, I got to Everest. I didn't make it. I had to turn back from 23,000 feet. Everest is 29,000 feet, so imagine um, um, a commercial plane uh, flying in that height. Um, so I had 6,000 feet, but I have to come down. 2007, I go back again. I didn't make it, chest infection, dislocated my ribs, I have to go back again. Now, I couldn't find a sponsor in 2008. I go back to Edinburgh, where I used to live. I sold my flat, my car, and I have 125 pound in my pocket, which is the 125 pound I have when I left the embassy. And I went to Everest. I couldn't go with the International Mountain Guide, so I went with myself and I took a Sherpa. My aim is to stand in the top at Jordan Independence Day on the 25th of May. I start climbing. Uh, it took me 72 days. I got to the top. I made the Azan. I prayed. And this is when my dream come true. I had a satellite phone. Thank you. I had a satellite phone. The deal was to call His Majesty from uh, the top. First, I called my mom and my dad. and. Uh, my dad was really happy, and my mom asked me if I had breakfast. I said, Mom, I'm on top of Everest. And then I tried to call the number they gave me to call His Majesty. Now it's 3.50 AM in Jordan. But they said, you have to call any time you arrive. So I called at 3.50 AM. I said, hello, it's me, Mustafa Salami. I'm I'm going to talk to you He put the phone down. So, I tried to go again and again. I called Prince Ali, uh, the king brother, and then we got to the king. And he says that I hope you are in the top waking me up this hour. I said, yes, I am in the top. So that was the change in life. I came back to Jordan. I was given uh, a medal by his majesty. He asked me what I want to do. I asked him if I can do my master's degree because I couldn't go back to hospitality. I wanted to make some change in the Middle East and spread this beautiful outdoor education. So I went back to Edinburgh, I joined university. I did my master's degree in outdoor education studies. And then I came back to start an initiative. Uh, it's called From the Lowest to the Highest for Cancer. I really wanted to help uh, people with cancer first and with disability. Uh, I start bringing teams together to Kilimanjaro Every Space Camp. From 2012 to 2018, I fundraised $6.8 million for uh, uh, cancer. 
And for uh, a different charity, I took the first Arab blind up to the top of Kilimanjaro, a first uh, wheelchairer up to uh, the top. Uh, so my aim now is mostly about making that change, planning to do my PhD next year, also the psychological effect of outdoor because I think it's very important when you travel and you see the world, you could make a massive change and I think this is what our young generation need to do. Now in 2016, uh, I got a call from Bloomsbury, and I, I do lots of reading, and I know Bloomsbury is a very big publishing house. I keep telling my friends that I want to write my book, and I thought one of my friends called me, and he said, uh, you know, my name is Jimmy, I'm calling you from Bloomsbury, we would like, we're interested uh, that if you write your book, we like the story, and I thought it was somebody joking, and I kept uh, telling my friend to just uh, bugger off, and. Uh, but then it was Bloomsbury, and I wrote my book, Dreams of Refugee. It was translated to Arabic, Ismu Ahlam Laje. And a great news now, the script writer, the same script writer who wrote Slam Dug Millionaire, is writing the script for the movie. Inshallah, that will be. Uh, thank you. Uh, that will be the production from uh, Netflix. Now, Next year, inshallah, I will take the first Jordanian woman and first Lebanese woman to climb Mount Everest. I always believe that woman could do absolutely what man can do, especially in the mountain. It's, it's because I know when you were pregnant, my mom was pregnant 10 times, uh, uh, you could climb Everest more than uh, one. So this is something going to be for woman empowerment. And it's really, I said, I will never go back to climb Everest again unless I'm going to take the first Jordanian woman, and this is what I'm going to do. Now, doing the Grand Slam, which is uh, 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 skiing in the South Pole and North Pole. Now, I've never skied in my life. In 2014, I learned how to ski. I went to the North Pole. I did the full distance. I came back, went to the South Pole. I did 65 days in the South Pole. I was sledging behind me 120 kilo. Uh, temperature go down to minus 52 but I have a mission that I was really something that I was always looking in the front and I knew that this is something I'm gonna do. Now, there is two quotes that really affected my life. One from Razi, and Razi says that Mawlid al-Abqariya, hiya tilka al-lahda allati yaktashifu al-insanu fiha maka'in mawhibatihi mahma kana umruh. And this is something that when you find your passion, you could absolutely conquer the world and you could make a massive change. But that change will never happen unless you change what in yourself. Now, I learned so much from this mountain and uh, to come back and make uh, a change in the Middle East. Next year, inshallah, in February, we'll have the first children's story. I'm written seven children's story. The first children's story is gonna come out in February, it's going to be in Arabic. Each children's story will have something about a mountain, Everest. Each children's story will have something about religion, Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity in a very subtle way. So our kids will learn because this is something really important. Every, every story will have a scholar. Razi, Ibn Sina, Fayrouz, Mahmoud Darwish, something that we are so proud of. And hopefully this is will make a little change uh, on our kids. Now, I believe that every one of us have an Everest in their life. And you could, your Everest could be your husband, your wife, it could be your education, it could be a mountain. And uh, I, I think we could achieve that by uh, taking, believing in ourselves. The belief in, in the self, I think, is the first step because if you believe in self, everyone around you will believe in you. And last things, I did find God in the mountain because I think the mountain is the most peaceful, spiritual place you can. And I always remember Al Ghazali with a beautiful quote about religion. He says that, لا أدري لماذا لا يطير العباد إلى ربهم على أجنحة من الشوق بدلا أن يساق إليه بصياط من الرهبة. إن الجهل بالله ودينه هو علة هذا الشعور البارد أو علة هذا الشعور النافر في المعنى الصحيح. لا أحد أحن ولا أبر على عبده من الله عز وجل. You could be absolutely wherever God is in your heart, 
I was in Austria doing some training. It was Friday. There is no mosque. I went to a church. I sat down for one hour. I prayed, and I came out because this is the house of God. It doesn't matter what everyone believes and how you believe it. It's all in the heart. I have four children. My wife is Catholic. I'm a Muslim. She practices religion. I practice my religion. <clears throat> the kids experience both of our religion. They will grow up to decide what they're going to do. That's the, the <laughs> fundamental. <laughs> and I think that's today just listening to about uh, the Middle East and what's happening and stuff. I look forward and I tell you that there is something great that's coming to our region. I think in, if you look to the French Revolution and British Revolution, it takes hundreds of years to where they come. We go in very fast, and I think it's, the change is happening. We just need to be very positive. Politics is politics. We're not going to ever understand it. But there is a breakthrough, and there is the change is coming. The only things we need to do is to tell our children that you need to make the change, and you have to start with yourself first, and that's how we're going to do it. And I hope every one of you will achieve uh, your Everest. And last things, I want to thank Ricardo. Ricardo, one of the, really, one of my inspiration, because I think what he's doing in the past 10 years is really bringing all this amazing, beautiful, great story to us to see it, because we didn't know much about it. And I think with TAC mind, I think that will make a, a revolution in the Middle East that will change people's mind and, and lots of stuff. I would like to give you my book. I put it here. I have a big pocket. Uh, Dreams of Everything. <laughs> I'll give you my book, and I want to give you something else from the Himalaya, which is a prayer flag from Tibet. So it's all in my pocket. Let's see. So. <laughs> So this is a prayer flag from, from Tibet. They put it up in the mountain, and you just put it through the windows. There is lots of prayer in there to bless your house and bless you and your family. And thank you so much for inviting me Can here. Can I ask my wife if she accepts? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.